G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Sunday morning here in Australia and the market's going up. It's looking pretty good. Bitcoin up around sort of 57,000, so climbed a little bit. Now we do have to be careful when we get these kind of, you know, weekends that kind of don't have that retracement and they pump a little bit. Could be a CME gap created in Bitcoin and so there could be a bit of a retracement. I don't think it'll be anything major, but look, I could be completely wrong and not all CME gaps get filled, but about 95% of them on average do. So just beware that we might have a little bit of a retracement come Monday morning, considering we've had a weekend where it's just kind of uh, gone up. But still, look, things are looking great. Bitcoin dominance, sorry. 46.6%, so back down in the 46 range again. ETH dominance rising and gas prices, 30, continue to come down. So maybe that Berlin hard fork really, really has worked. And look, EIP 1559 coming. Things are looking pretty good on the Ethereum front. And, you know, layer two solutions, you know, Polygon just goes from strength to strength. So, yeah, things are looking really, really good. And most people would have to be happy. And that's the thing about this market is, Look, we have those downturns. It's very similar to other markets, you know, the, so, the sort of peaks and lows that they have. It's just more extreme in cryptocurrencies. That's generally how it works. The upside is much more, but also the downside is much more. So as long as you can kind of handle that, then this is the space for you. But let's move on and have a look. It's basically a sea of green at the moment. Like it just looks really, really good. So what's done really well in the last 24 hours? Because almost everything's done really well in the last seven days, which is good. Right, OBK, Nano, Ethereum, Classic. I don't know what's going on there. Huobi, Aave, and again, Doge. Look, it just, <laughs> it, it knows no boundaries. So yeah, good on anyone who got into Doge and stayed in Doge. Because again, as I've already said, I got into it twice, doubled my money twice, and then didn't go back. Uh, and didn't have any skin left in the game and I bought it for well under a cent I'm pretty sure I can't remember the exact money but I know I doubled my money twice so well on Doge Maker, Solana, Zero X, Hedera, Hashgraph, Chainlink, The Graph I mean I spoke about this just the other day it looked really really nice uh, against Bitcoin so yeah lots of gains there and look a lot of pretty good ones you know pretty much 15% and above in that 24 hour period it's very very nice Right, 24 hours. Has anything not done well in the last 24 hours? Pancake swap down a little bit. Pirate chain, good lord, down 43%. Who would have thought? <laughs> Harmony down 4%. Again, I mean, you just got to jump to the right hand side and have a look how well these things have done over the last seven days, other than pirate chain. And ah, who would have thought? <laughs> so, look, some good gains there, and really. Losses, very, very small. I mean, look, even Engine Coin just continues to go up. Uh, you know, there we go. Polygon pulled back 1.4%, but up 106% from where it's from. Now, it has been a little bit higher. I think it was about 80-something cents. So, look, we could be see some more downside from Polygon before we see some more upside. But, look, these gains are very, very minimal. Very, very minimal in comparison to the... Sorry, these losses are very, very minimal in comparison to you know some of the gains that were had so all in all markets look really good uh, again just beware of a bit of a uh, CME gap being created uh, in the Bitcoin chart and if Bitcoin uh, has a bit of a dip most things uh, will follow if it just ranges sideways altcoins do really well but if Bitcoin has a bit of a dip a lot of other coins can follow suit all right let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart see where we're at so we had a confirmed daily close above the 50-day moving average. So that was good. That's what I was hoping. But now we're on the second day and have a look at this. The second day, uh, sorry, not the second day really, the day after that daily close above, it's looking like we're going to have a bit of an indecision candle here. Again, it looks like a bit of a spinning top. So this could be a fake out and it rolls over and breaks lower. We're not really sure yet. We'll have to wait and see. And again, indecision candles don't mean it's always going to break to the downside. Indecision, I mean, look, we got sort of indecision over here and look what comes after it. It breaks to the upside. But all I'm saying is it means the market's really unsure. They're happy to buy under the 50-day moving average, but they're not so happy to buy above the 50-day moving average at the moment. So for me, uh, again, 
even if we do uh, break back down, I'm not expecting us to, you know, go way lower. Like, I don't think we're going to come down and test this 200-day moving average. I think it's going to take something extraordinary for that to happen. There's just too much buying pressure. Uh, you know, there's still companies coming out and putting $100 million into Bitcoin and things like that. And it sounds like they're generally waiting for the dips. That's when they're buying, when, you know, Bitcoin's getting down, you know, below the 50-day and, you know, near the 100-day moving average, it's getting bought up. And what's going to happen is if we keep traveling sideways, the 200-day moving average is going to get closer and closer and closer to the 100 and the 50 day. And what happens then is I think if that happens, that we just do a lot of sideways, you know, consolidation for a while, like let's say, you know, two months, and I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. It's never financial advice. But if we were to just travel sideways, you know, for two months, ranging in between, you know, sort of 50 and 60,000, eventually this 200 day moving average would get pretty close to it. And then that makes it a really good buying opportunity. And it means we can touch the 200 day moving average without the price having to dip a really, really long way. Like, you know, if we had have touched the 200 day moving average from up here at 60, sort of $4,000, you know, coming down to what would have it been then, you know, $32,000, I mean, that's a really, really big dip. But now to get to the 200 day moving average, we're only going from sort of 57,000 yeah, $57,000, $58,000 down to sort of $36,000. That's not so big a gap. So that's what could happen. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. But if we travel sideways, it means the 200-day moving average will start to get closer and closer. And then really, I think people will just say, right here, this is a good buying opportunity. The more we go sideways, the better the buying opportunity it becomes. Because this is really a key indicator for whether we're in a bear market uh, or a bull market if we stay above it then it's bull if we start to go below it uh, it's likely a bear but i mean we can sort of wick down and then bounce off it and look if bitcoin just continues to travel sideways you know again just sort of ranging fifty thousand sixty thousand and doesn't do too much altcoins just continue to go absolutely mental and that's good for anyone who's in the altcoin space all right, so again, that's my Bitcoin breakdown analysis. I do think we're probably, you know, going to have a bit of a dip come sort of Monday morning, not so much Monday morning Australian time, more Monday evening Australian time, but that will be Monday morning for uh, America and that, unless we have a bit of a sell-off before then, because I just think a CME gap may have been created already. But I don't think it's going to be huge, no big sell-off or anything like that. All right, some interesting stories. So Goldman Sachs, they've listed 19 crypto stocks that have crushed the S&P 500 thanks to Bitcoin surge. Investment bank Goldman Sachs has compiled a list of 19 large cap stocks with cryptocurrency exposure that have massively outperformed the S&P 500. On average, these stocks have dramatically outperformed the S&P 500 during the last several months alongside the surge in the price of Bitcoin, the firm wrote. Now, some of these stocks are Marathon Digital Holdings, Riot Blockchain MicroStrategy, Class A, Silvergate, Capital Corp, Class, uh, sorry, Capital Corp, Class A, Square Class A, PayPal hold, Holdings, Overstock, NVIDIA, uh, Interview, Ideonomics, Tesla, JP Morgan Chase, Visa Class A, Bank of New York, Mellon Corporation, Facebook, uh, class A, MasterCard, Class A, Broadbridge Financial Solutions, IBM and Coinbase, Class A. So a number of stocks there and they have well outperformed the S&P 500. So, you know, if you were lucky enough to get into these stocks kind of before all of this started or, you know, nice and early, then you've performed extremely well. And I have been saying, look, you know, if I start to get back into stocks and it's more when, these are some stocks that I'll look at. But again, I'll wait to see, you know, what the bear market is like in the crypto market and see how that affects the stocks and then hopefully look to buy into these stocks if they have a bit of a sell-off because we go into a bear market uh, to get into them nice and early. But there's also other things I like, you know, green energy, I really do think that's going to be, well, not going to be, it already is, but it's going to be an even bigger space in the future. So cryptocurrencies, green energy, uh, the medical industry, you know, there's lots of good things going on there. Uh, the cannabis industry, again, I think that has a whole lot more upside. They're some of the things I'll be looking uh, to get into when I get back, you know, 
into more stocks. I've still got a couple of stocks right now, but really I don't have much at all. And that's something I'll be looking at. But again, also waiting, uh, you know, to get some of the profits that I have and hopefully, depending how much I can make, uh, get into property. That's also something I think, you know, is, is always a smart bet property. But again, it's got to be the right property, the right time and all the rest of it. Otherwise, you know, you get into the wrong time in the wrong place. You could suffer a bit of a loss for a while, but generally property always goes up at least here in australia roughly every seven to 15 years property doubles so that's not too bad again i'm not saying there's not better investments cryptocurrencies you know you can double in you know 24 hours sometimes or you know definitely double in a week or two at times but you know that's not always the case particularly when we go into a bear market it goes the other way and can dump you know near 75 95 percent depending what you're in all right so Bitmain co-founder Jimmy Wu says the crypto industry may surpass the internet. Look, lots of people have been talking about that and, you know, compare where we are now to the very early days of the internet. All right, during the second 421 wet season festival, the Mining Ecology Conference, uh, uh, and Mining Ecology Conference, sorry, the chairman of the Bitdeer Group and co-founder of Bitmain, uh, Jihan Wu, spoke about institutions flocking to cryptocurrency mining. During the event, Bitdeer outlined the company's computing partnerships and its plans to make digital currency mining greener. And look, this is the thing that most people have a problem with, you know, with the Bitcoin mining at least. You know, it takes up so much money, but if we can, you know, make it basically 100% uh, green, then it doesn't matter how much power it uses as long as we're not, you know, burning fossil fuels and that. And that's people's biggest gripe. So, you know, the green energy space, like I said, it will become, you know, even more forefront if, you know, well, not if, I believe it's already happening, but some people may say if, you know, cryptocurrencies and mining and that just continues to grow, then green energy will grow with it. Now he says here, in the long run, the blockchain industry is bullish and is the biggest opportunity. I, I agree as well. You know, opportunities like this sort of come around once in a lifetime for most generations. There's something in there. It's just about whether people can see it and get onto it nice and early. The innovations in this industry may even surpass the internet itself. I mean, I can remember, you know, some people won't be old enough. I can remember when the internet was kind of first introduced uh, to people. It was just this random thing and, you know, very few people could understand it. And they just thought this is never going to take off. This is all just computer nerdy sort of stuff that, you know, will again, will never be adopted, you know. And one of the big things that really changed the internet was email. <laughs> people were like, Oh, all right, so I can send what, you know, we used to have to write letters or type letters or whatever it was, put it in the post. You know, sometimes it could take days, weeks or months to get delivered and things like that. And then all of a sudden they were like, I can basically do a letter. I just type something now and it gets sent to someone through the internet and takes maybe a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes or, you know, maybe even an hour or two, depending uh, sometimes with internet connections and all the rest of it back then. But it was almost immediate. And that is what really changed things. And yeah, it just went from there. That Again, that was just a small use case. And you know, now we've got internet banking and phones that use the internet and house appliances that use the internet. I mean, you name it. The internet is an absolute behemoth. And imagine being able to invest in the internet back then. Again, most people would have told you this is ludicrous and crazy and it's never going to work and you know people won't use this it's got very little use cases and now look where we are today i believe cryptocurrency is in exactly that same space i think there's so many you know interesting projects out there that i think can do really really good things and big things and i went through you know the things that i'm invested in yesterday and again that's not financial advice that's just what i like you go out and do your own research and you know make your own mind up but i think people who get into good projects early and now is still going to be early you know you may suffer a bit through the next bear market whenever it comes but you know i just think five to ten years time if you're in good things yeah who knows where you're going to be right now no and that's the thing no one really knows again like you know bitcoin's under sixty thousand right now and people are talking about it going to you know three hundred thousand a million in ten years time if you can get something for sixty thousand dollars, or again, you don't even have to buy the whole thing, but sixty thousand into a million dollars, 
man, that's well over a 10x, you know, you're probably 15x, where else can you put money and 15 exit in, you know, five to 10 years? And again, no guarantees, that's, that's not a guarantee of financial advice, but that's the kind of stuff that's been happening in cryptocurrency for a long time now. And I, I, I do believe the, the gains are going to get smaller, but they're still going to be there. We haven't got to the mass adoption yet. We haven't got to that, you know, peak point where everybody's in. And so, you know, it's really diluted. It's, it, it's, you know, that's when it all really starts to even out. But in the end, there's 21 million Bitcoin, period, end of story. There will be no more unless everybody gets together and votes to make more. And I just can't see that happening, particularly considering it can be broken down into, you know, millions of pieces each Bitcoin. It's because of that hard cap that it will just continue to increase in price. Again, not by the you know drastic uh, you know price uh, pumps that we see now. That will eventually even out, even out, but it will go up. It won't. It's never going to be like cash where they just keep making more, so it continues to be diluted. This can't do that. And that is why I'm really big on cryptocurrencies and still in the long run, I think there's still, you know, at least a decade of really, really good upside. But again, time will be the ultimate uh, storyteller on whether that comes true or not. All right. So uh, Fundstrat Briefing maintains six digit Bitcoin price forecast and 10K Ethereum target. So Fundstrat Global Advisors, most recent weekly CRIFO, CRIFO, crypto briefing, and the company's lead, lead digital asset strategist, God, I'm struggling again today, it's too early, that's why, David Greider opines a target Bitcoin price of 100k per Bitcoin is still intact. Moreover, Fundstrap believes that their price of Ethereum will reach a 10k target while the entire crypto economy is on pace to hit 5 trillion. And look, that's really only a double from here. That's not that hard. There's, there's so much more of the world to get into cryptocurrency. I really think, you know, if the entire world got on, you know, gets on board, and I believe that will come, I just don't know when that's going to happen. Man, I think a five trillion is well under. I think 10, 20, 30 trillion is probably, you know, more sort of realistic. But again, that's going to take time. That won't happen overnight. But, you know, these are big global players who are, you know, saying things like that. They're generally what is considered smart money. Now, they don't know everything uh, and they've been wrong before. They've been wrong plenty of times, but they're generally right more than they're wrong. And they know, and that's how they play these kind of games. They put out a whole stack of bets there and they only need one or two of them to come right out of, you know, maybe the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 bets that they put on and they make squillions of dollars, but they are not always right. And no one's always right. All right, DeFi adoption. So decentralized finance protocols and Binance Smart Chain saw their token prices and total value locked rise towards new highs after a series of protocol upgrades and cross-chain integrations. So lots of really, really good things happening on Binance Smart Chain, but there's also been some rug pulls and these new projects, you know, buyer beware, just be careful. They've had a number of uh, projects on the Binance Smart Chain that have, yeah, again, there's a lot of, chat about whether they were rug pulls or not and of course the people who did the rug pulls are going to say oh no it wasn't a rug pull you know we got scammed blah 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 but a lot of other people are saying that that's exactly what they were so just be careful with new projects don't put your life savings into it you're most likely going to get uh, undone doing those kind of things now three projects on the Binance smart chain that have seen increases in trading volume price and activity uh, within their DeFi protocols are Venus Pancake Swap and Linear Finance. So the announcement of the airdrops, and we're talking about uh, Venus right now. The announcement of airdrops combined with the listing of XVS on the Crypto.com exchange helped spark a 70% rally in the price of Venus from a low of $72 on April 29th, it was only a few, day, just a few days ago, to an all-time high $124 April 30th and again that, that was yeah 24 hours later basically it did that and you can see this big massive pump here now oh, now for me I'm not jumping into that I'm waiting to see it could form a good base here or it could again come back down and retest this 
before it starts to go up higher or at least somewhere around there so again don't FOMO FOMO is really dangerous and if you're gonna kind of FOMO dollar cost average into that FOMO so in case it does turn around and go down you know you're buying it at a cheaper price you don't just simply buy it at here and then watch it come all the way down to here that's what really hurts and that's generally new money and what they call dumb money I don't like the term dumb money but it is new money people who just don't know any better and it doesn't mean they're dumb they just haven't been around long enough now cake rallied a hundred and two percent over the last uh, over the past week going from a low of $21.90 on April 23rd to a record high of $44.28 on April 30th as token holders engaged uh, with the low fees and high yield protocol so again be careful not to FOMO into this just wait and see if there's going to be a correction and even then try and dollar cost average in don't get me wrong if this fully dumps 50 percent and ends excuse me and ends up back here and not because of any bad news just because it's a correction this would be a good buying opportunity somewhere down here i would say and i'm not saying it's going to do that but that's when you might put a bit more money in than just kind of dca when you see really good corrections and it's not because the entire market's changed and it's not because um, the project has bad news or anything it's just what we would call a healthy price correction that's when you might start to you know put more money than you're DCing aiming in when you see a good healthy correction now Lena right so Lena has climbed 70% over the past week rising from a low of you know it's less than a cent so it's uh, 0.69 of a cent and going to 11 cents Whoa, nice nice very nice 11 cents on April 30th uh, that doesn't seem right 70% from oh no that is six cents sorry yep so almost seven cents uh, to 11 cents so there you go that makes a little bit more sense but still I mean 70% in a week that is some good gains right there now again you want to just see what happens from here because you're probably gonna have a correction but I mean this is a bit of a correction and this is a bit of a correction so just have a look before you really FOMO into any of these things but again, look, lots of really good things happening on Binance Smart Chain, but there have been rug pulls and they've generally been within the DeFi kind of space as well. So just be careful. All right, Ripple. Now, this is very, very interesting. They had the court case, uh, you know, almost finish up, but the judge or judges have decided to hold off on their decision. But it seems like the United States is the only country claiming that XRP is a security, not a currency, uh, said the CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse. Now, of course, he's going to say that, but from all the stuff that I've read uh, and been able to find out, and it's all on the internet, I don't know when anyone personally... Uh, in the United States government or you know working for Ripple or anything like that but it does seem the United States is the only ones that have done that no other country is claiming it uh, as a security so very very interesting and look you know the the final you know the the outcome I should say not the final but the outcome could come very soon maybe as early as next week you know we're all sort of waiting to see what happens and you know maybe getting into xrp now you know could be a good idea particularly if they get cleared but if they don't get cleared then it could be the other way so again try not to fomo in you know if you want to get into some ripple at the moment then try and dca don't just kind of go crazy and all out that could really really hurt all right uzbekistan plans to lift this cryptocurrency bans so this is what's going to happen there you know there's going to be countries and governments and whatnot and they're going to come out and ban cryptocurrencies you know and this is one and they're going to be forced to change because they are being regulated they are they're becoming you know completely legitimized not all cryptocurrency projects don't get me wrong but cryptocurrencies like the space itself particularly bitcoin and ethereum they're regulated this is here to stay it's not going to turn around and go away so any country that's going to ban cryptocurrencies and all the rest of it it's only a matter of time until they're going to turn around and do a u-turn as it says up here so the national project management agency of the presidency of the public republic of uzbekistan or naft plan or publish plans to remove some of the cryptocurrency restrictions in the country so not all of them but they they can't just simply have this blanket ban it won't work they're going to get left behind the government agency proposed to allow local residents to purchase digital assets from both domestic and foreign currencies uh, inside the former soviet public soviet republic sorry 
And look, same thing, you know, India's tried to ban it, China's tried to ban it, you know, there's been a number of countries that have tried to ban it, and they can't do it. It's on the internet, you know, they, they, it'd just be too hard. And with other countries going really big into it, they don't have a choice, they have to follow suit. So, yeah, people telling you it's a ban, and we're going to get onto a story, you know, next. Uh, Ponzi's and this and that and rah-rah, they literally just don't get it. They have no idea what's going on uh, and they're clueless. They are literally clueless. Now, are there cryptocurrencies out there that are crap and Ponzi's? 100%. Uh, and should they be banned? 100%. But it's not all cryptocurrencies. There's a number of really, really good projects out there and things that are likely going to change the way, uh, you know, they're going to change the way that we have, you know, used finance previously to now, you know, staking and things like that. There's just so much going on. And this is a perfect example of someone who just doesn't get it. All right, so Bill Mayer trashes crypto as Ponzi in 10-minute rant. Oh, just, just an old dude who doesn't get it. That's what it is. So Bill Mayer devoted a chunk of his chat show last night to brutally lay into crypto. On HBO's Real Time, Mayer told his viewers that crypto is a Ponzi scheme. It's not a Ponzi scheme. It's not a Ponzi scheme at all. You don't have to have... Uh, you know, you don't buy in to then uh, take the money from people who bought in to, from you before. Uh, it's, yeah, it's so hard for people to kind of understand. Bitcoin goes up because people are buying it, but you don't, it doesn't have to make money from the early adopters selling it to uh, the people who come in after them. It has 21 million it's capped. If people just keep buying it, it continues to go up. It's not the people at the top that have to keep selling their Bitcoin back to the other people. There's more being mined. The, the whole, you know, it's a Ponzi scheme has been debunked and anyone that's telling you it's a Ponzi scheme doesn't get it. But are there Ponzi uh, cryptocurrencies out there? Yep, SafeMoon, perfect example. Uh, what was the one back in 2017? I can't remember. Uh, BitConnect, you know, there were, there's been a number of Ponzi ones out there, and that's literally what they are. They are a Ponzi. But Bitcoin's not a Ponzi. Ether's not a Ponzi. They, <laughs> they've been around. They've stood the test of time. Their program, you know, their code and all the rest of it is out there for everyone to see. This is just someone old who doesn't get it and is going to miss out on, you know, the massive gains. I mean, look, Bill May is doing it right for himself anyway, I'm quite sure. But he, this is, yeah, old guys who don't get it. That should be the hashtag, old guys who don't get it. Now it says here, our problem here is at root, not economic, but psychological. Again, still doesn't get it. People who have been raised in a virtual world are starting to believe they can actually live in it. No one believes that they can live in a, uh, in a virtual world. They understand they can go into it and do all sorts of stuff, but you're not going to live in a virtual world. That's, you know, that's, you know, don't get me wrong. There's some kind of geeks out there, you know, computer nerds, and I'm kind of one of them, so I really don't like to use that word, but I did anyway, sort of slipped out. They probably think one day they're going to be able to, but the average person doesn't think that. And again, have a look. This is just an old dude who doesn't get it. That's the new hashtag, I think, old dude who doesn't get it. All right, last but not least. So Valkyrie Digi Digital Assets has launched a polka dot fund with a novel twist. So the investment vehicle will give clients access to the appreciation of the underlying tokens, but also the 8% yield from Valkyrie staking the asset through Coinbase custody. Now Val Valkyrie follows Osprey Funds, which launched the first uh, dot uh, fund earlier this week, but without the staking perks. So Osprey has the fund, but no staking perks. Now Grayscale Investment, the world's largest digital asset manager, which also is owned by Coindesk parent company, uh, Digital Currency Group, has incorporated a dot trust, but has yet, has yet to launch it. So I'm super bullish on dot. I really like it. I've uh, been using it for a while. I mean, don't get me wrong. It doesn't have a lot of real world applications yet. Uh, again, it's very similar to Ethereum, but it works really well. I like the staking. You know, if, if things can progress, I see massive upside for it. But again, and I've said this a number of times, Ethereum, DOT, Cardano, 
you know, Adam, doesn't matter what it is, they're all a promise at the moment. None of them have, you know, they're, they're not a finished product and they should never be finished. They should be constantly, you know, evolving, but they're not even close to a finished project at the moment and they don't have a whole lot of real world applications. So you've got to remember that there's a whole lot of promise from these things, but they haven't quite got there yet. We're still a little ways off. But in saying that, I really love to uh, have been into it for quite some time and yeah, loving every minute of it. And again, now we just need that real world adoption uh, and things like that to happen. But you know, yeah, the fees are very, very minimal and it just works seamlessly so far. But again, it doesn't have a lot of DeFi apps and things on it, which are still yet to come. But same with Cardano and likewise, you know, even Ethereum, you know, the gas fees uh, still kind of knock you around a little bit. And we haven't re really been able to use DeFi in the real world sort of yet in very small pockets of it. You know, we still, you know, there's credit cards that are out now or debit cards. That you can start to spend your crypto, which is good. But, you know, we're still a long way from the mass adoption. All right. Well, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. It's looking pretty good at the moment. And I'll see you next time.